All right, part two of the Easter Island statue there. Uh, we're still f working on finishing the ears. Um, obviously, uh, the uh, back is done now. I think the ears are the last thing that we actually have to do uh, prior to uh, sealing the cardboard. You're going to see me tape a little bit because I said I wasn't going to seal it, uh, but then I decided to seal the cardboard so that it wouldn't... Um, get wet. If it gets wet it loses its rigidity and as a form it would collapse potentially uh, if if there was w wet cement put on it and uh, uh, the cardboard needs to be sealed. So you're gonna see me actually we're putting uh, the back on. It looks like we put the ears on and now I'm unscrewing them so I can put the back on. I misstepped here but uh, you put the back on then you put the ears on and you don't have that step uh, uh, being in conflict there but uh, right now uh, finishing the back and then like I say you're gonna see me doing a little taping here uh, on the joints my thought is that there is an elevation change between one layer of cardboard and the other and this makes a transition to where you don't eat up as much mud I'm not worried about the cost of the mud I'm worried about the weight of the mud in addition it, it doesn't allow water to get in 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 the edge of the cardboard or in between the cardboard in some carry areas you have a gap uh, that's larger than just two layers of cardboard coming together so I'm going to address those too but uh, you're going to see me put on a little tape here and then I stop and then I take it outside and seal it with a, 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 a clear acrylic 100% acrylic carried in a xylene based solvent it's just a, uh, um, a way of getting that to where it is not going to allow the moisture from the mud to soak into the cardboard making it lose its rigidity now here we've got two of the statues side by side and you're seeing me tape if you look on either side of the lower part of the nostril towards the edge of the cheek you see a hole there uh, where the cardboard doesn't fill in uh, all the way and I'm going to tape all those areas uh, on the left side of the eye area there there's a gap in the cardboard now I'm outside sealing this uh, just to get it like I say waterproofed and uh, sealing it all two coats and and then basically coming now in the shop and gonna tape over like those areas where the the tabs are there's a, a huge elevation change there and taping over it just gives a perfect skin an outside skin that is just continuous without any real elevation change now here we're starting to mud this is uh, what we're trying to go for is a three-quarter inch lay that's the finish of the structural mud and then we'll talk about the texture mud but all I'm doing is the very base the bottom of it oh uh, where that uh, base comes up along the uh, vertical part of the the, the the base I'm doing the underside of the chin and the neck um, and then I'm gonna do the lips and then I'm gonna do underneath the nose and underneath the br brow because those are horizontally when the, when the statue's in the upright position, those are horizontally oriented, and it's just easier to lay it down and do it. Now, you're going to see uh, us stop mudding here after this the brow is done, although I do the whole chest area, as you can see. I did the underside of the neck, the chin, the lips, the nose, and the eyebrows. Now, I'm standing it up, and that one's done. You can see the one behind me. Uh, where the guys are working on that that's the got the eyebrows then underneath the nose the the lips the neck the chin and the base now they're mudding the second portion of it uh, so now we've got two of them they're both in the same position the ones that the front two guys are doing are in the same position that I just lifted up where the brow the nose the lips the chin and the base are done now they're just finishing all the other vertical uh, surfaces again three quarters of an inch of mud now our mud is very special in that at three quarters of an inch 12,000 psi strong it is unbelievably unparalleled in this marketplace and again for a seven and a half foot you know four by three and a half statue three quarters of an inch uh, weighs in about 300 pounds and it is strong the f again the form of the cardboard is nothing but a form to gain the shape that you're after it's no structure uh, but it is it is like I say a total hollow, hollow uh, uh, cavity in there and the, the shell is what makes the strength 
So uh, that's what they're doing now. And again, you can't apply this with a trowel. Uh, it has to be rubbed in to get it to uh, each each placement to be unified. Now, Skyler's out there now, which is an unnecessarily uh, needed action here to grind the, the fiber down because it's so hairy uh, to get it to uh, knock it down. You could have done that when, it, when you were mudding it and it should have been done. At the same time, Grinding is often done for aesthetic, you know, to uh, to to bring into shape uh, what should be already there. Uh, now we're going to wash it down in preparations of doing the texture coat. This was the structure coat that we just did. So again, washing it down, getting it all done. <clears throat> now um, the the guys are still working on the on the. Uh, the two, the one I just brought outside was one that was finished. Now the head's too rounded here. As when I look back at the, the photos of the Easter Island statue, uh, I made a, a kind of an error here in my templated form here where I think I rounded it too much. So what I'm doing now is using solid fill method with some styrofoam chunks and covering it over with some more fiber mud. You'll see as I get done with this top, uh, you compare the front statue to the back statue. The back statue, the head has not been altered. The front statue, it has. Where the lips are here, it was the lips just popped out too much, and they they needed to be subtle in their transition from the from all areas of the face to the lips. So I just kind of added to that, and you'll see the back statue I was talking about there. It uh, was too round where the front statue now is good. Now we brought it over to the other shop now. Uh, we're going to, again, now we're putting the Stone Tough admixture. It's a bonding agent and an admixture. We're spraying that all over the surfaces because we're about to apply a splatter coat of texture mud, which is going to give us the texture that we're looking for, which replicates the Easter Island statue. Although the statues that I saw photographically from Easter Island had a lot more uh, roughness to it. Mine doesn't have as much of that, but uh, you know, preference I think took hold here. But now we've got it outside. Now I took it over to this shop because this parking lot needs to be resurfaced, and splattering does tend to get a mess. Uh, so I didn't really mind it in this parking lot. But uh, the uh, the fact is, the dash brush uh, is we've got a concrete pump. I could have blown this on with a concrete pump, but my concrete pump takes about a bucket and a half of mud to fill where this was only a three bucket uh, operation here and the pool deck brush is my oldest form of splatter texture and I think I like the effects of it more and especially not having to hear the pump and clean the pump and get it started and have it plug and all this other stuff so within about a half an hour we had those two of us had those three statues totally textured and then we let it sit overnight and then came back with a grinder wheel in our hand a fiber grinding wheel knocked it down now washed it it's inside we've now applied a bonding agent again now we're applying the hydro seal and what i'm pointing out here is that you don't want to see the brush marks this particular fireplace texture was not as rough as would be the statue so i was just trying to indicate to you watch your paintbrush marks this is a finish uh, surface here and we don't want to see paintbrush marks so again hydro sealing it is the best mud that we can use in the in the cement realm to give us a seal uh, we're we're going to stain it and then seal it here after I drop it off here. We're installing this outside my shop at home. And uh, notice I not put a concrete base down. Well, I didn't have my wife's approval to even put this statue there. She thought it was kind of creepy as we were making it anyway. So down by my shop, you can't see it from the house. So I didn't put a concrete uh, foundation of at least three and a half, four inches to set this down. I just put it in the dirt. If you were going to do that, put some gravel down. You'll see me lay the statue down here momentarily, and then I'm going to dig out a level area on this hill. And at that point, if I'd have dug it another six inches, put some gravel underneath it, I'd have a better installation. Uh, notice where my hand was just, the, the, the base of this statue has a vertical uh, area on it, which I intended to have buried in the ground four inches, so you didn't see the underside of it. Um, Again, foundations are important to long-term uh, success. This is a clay-based soil, high clay-based soil, and if it gets saturated, it could tend to move. So I would want a foundation underneath it. In my particular case, I didn't, so I could move it if I was so so uh, ordered by my wife. Now, again, the compressor, I don't have a compressor in my shop right now. Uh, I have a little teeny one, which the air gun wouldn't, uh, to spray this on using an HPV gun would have been my preference, but... 
uh, not having the the enough CFM to do that, I just used the pool deck brush, which is old technology, which we used to stain this way. But for as little as I'm staining here, it doesn't take very long. I, I don't really address in this short clip the staining. I edited out a lot of it because I didn't have the time in this YouTube video. But uh, with the staining we have in our other DVDs, but. Uh,